Right. If you're just joining us, not too late. We are just starting the discussions now. Let me quickly introduce the guests. Uh, of course, you already know what we are looking at, uh, at this morning. State police, to be or not to be, is part of the national questions, the Nigerian questions that we are uh, throwing up at this moment. We've been looking at some of them since last week. Uh, Dabulus Pam Dareng is joining us for discussions this morning. Dab means an elder or something like that? Yeah. In, uh, that's Birum. Okay. Dabulus is uh, a retired general manager of Force Bank. Called, uh, is, uh, he was also coordinator of Good Luck Campaign Organization in Plateau State in the 2011 elections and chairman forum of coordinating uh, chairman forum of uh, coordinators of the Good Luck Campaign Organization. That's a very powerful position. <laughs> or oh, that was. <laughs> yes, that was. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Well. My next guest is also a politician, but uh, of a different extraction. <laughs> Honorable Yusuf Tuga uh, is a politician, former member of the House of Representatives. Uh, he also contested the governorship election in the last election on the platform of the CPC in Bochi State. Good to see you, Honorable. Always a pleasure. Dr. Chris Ekio is joining us. He is not a politician at all. At least he has not told me that he's a politician. At best, is a youth activist. Uh, Dr. Chris Akio used to be the president of the Ejo Youth Council. Council. Yes. Thank you. Uh, good to see you, Chris. Good morning. All right. Uh, because I saw you here, I just couldn't resist popping this question. Mm -hmm. Part of the Nigerian question. Let me take you to the, what we saw in Nasarawa State. Yes. Nasarawa State has brought investors to exploit and explore the hundreds of mineral deposits in that state. Correct. No doubt after investing in exploration and making all the money, I doubt if Governor Tanko and Makura will bring a couple of it to the federal government to spend. He doesn't have a choice. It's not him. his to decide. Uh, licenses for mining such minerals are issued by the Solid Minerals uh, Ministry under the Mining Cadastre, and their taxes that accrue from such activities, just like their taxes that accrue from uh, mining petroleum resources, petroleum profit tax, royalties, etc. So that goes straight into the coffers of the federal government. He can uh, float a company uh, at the state level, obtain a license, or partner with uh, people who already own such licenses, exploit it, uh, export it, make money out of it, but the issue of taxes accruing to federal government will always be there. And so it will all, be that the, all that the federal government is entitled to here are just taxes? Taxes, yeah. Why are we not advancing the same argument when it comes to oil? Why are we not saying that all that the federal government can get from oil will be taxes? But uh, royalties. Yes, and but not, that the, uh, not the other way around. Essentially, that is what federal government is getting. Yes, you have a company that has invested in mining such uh, 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 resources, NNPC, which used to be Nigerian uh, Oil Corporation when it was uh, conceived way back. And it put money in there, and uh, Shell put money in there. In the case of uh, Chevron, Chevron put money in there. It was a joint venture. They invested, mm -hmm. exploited the resources, and they're paying taxes. So that is essentially what it is. So back then, the northern region, the eastern region, the western region, all put money together and invested in mining such resources. So they have to reap the, uh, the benefits. So if Al Mokura floats a company and puts in money, he partners, then, you know, he will reap the, the benefit. And if it is uh, some federal entity that forms a corporation or a company and invests, then they will reap benefits. But the issue of taxes, that will have to be paid and that will be shared at the federal level. Hmm. Uh, 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 yes, uh, 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 because it's a Nigerian question. Uh, uh, it's, a, I will... it's very interesting and I'm happy yeah. that you raised those points. And constitutionally and the situation as it is now, al Makura may not have so much right to the benefits and the revenues from derived from those minerals, as you stated. That comes to the question of the Nigerian question, the federation question. Are we a true federation? Because if you look at it today, some of the oil producing states 
go home with 10, 15 billion. Other states are going with 1, 1 billion, less than 2 billion, because they, they are having a lot of percentage of the oil revenue. So if, if people have the right to mine what they have, because the disparity between a state is a, of all equal powers, but somebody goes home with 20, mil, 20 billion per month, another one is going with 1 billion, and have almost the same population. What is the rationale about it? Yet, he has his own mineral resources. If people were made to work hard mm -hmm. and then to actually mine what they have, then it could look different. And if now he's mentioned this one, by the time they were exploring oil, the tin mining, the land in Plateau State was devastated. So much damage. We didn't get anything from it. Even up to today, when we talk of ecological funds to close some of these pits, nothing has been done. But the same money from the tin mining was used for oil exploration. What did we have for it? We are not part of the oil production. There's nothing like a mineral uh, production zone like uh, upper deck or what do you call it. So when you talk of the way we should always look at what is the situation, where are we? The true federalism, is it there or is it not there? The question we are looking at. We have just at learned yesterday yeah. that a number of states has joined the the oil states. Is there an umbra? Uh, yes. Or Sokoto? An umbra, no Sokoto. The, the, uh, the president, and uh, they said that an umbra has been accepted now as one of the oil. Yeah. So the only uh, Sokoto from, is on his way to becoming one. I don't know. <laughs> so those that you get the money to start the oil exploration are forgotten. Hmm. Chris, there's no way, there's no how you toss the coin. Whichever side whatever cycle that comes up, we have something to see. Now, the Darren here just talked about the effect of mining in plateau in those days when the question of derivation was not even there. He also talked about the question of some states, in, uh, oil producing states going home with where, where some go home with about 10 billion every month, some go home with about 1 billion. How equitable is that? But one side of it that he also didn't mention is the fact that whereas some live perpetually with the bad effects of oil exploration that has rendered the environment completely unusable for any other thing, not for fishing, not for agriculture. Uh, uh, and this is a lifetime condition as well. We're also not looking at that effect. Yeah, I was, I was excitedly listening to the arguments for pushing and it reflects the, the two status of how Nigerians think. I have been here before to, to dissect the Solid Mineral Act and the petroleum um, laws, that the extant laws that establish what we do. Whereas the Solid Mineral Act provides for me to own a license, and for you who wants to mind to negotiate with me, what royalties do you mean? This is, the Oil Mineral Act does not allow that. It takes the right of ownership from the people and put it in the, in the federal government, who manage on behalf of the people and decide to give to the people what it deems fit. Nobody has sat down to think that we are doing 2.8 billion dollars, uh, barrels per day, million barrels per day, and each barrel is about 118 dollars, and if you extrapolate that per year, what it translates to, and what gets back to the country, and what gets back to those people you have mentioned who suffer the devastation. I'm happy that governors are beginning to think that we need to do what is called true federalism. What Nassau State is doing is what I expect every state of federation to do. What Sokoto State is doing is the same thing. You, should, you need to dare to mine resources in your land and play with the available laws and see how it fits. And he has cleared it out. They will mine. They have to uh, align with what the law says. If the law says that money will go to the federal government, it should go there, and the 36 states will share from that, that fund, yeah. and what it gets will be what it gets for investing. Otherwise, the way to go, and I've always said it, is, and it falls back to the same argument we're having about state police and all that. People should not converse from thin, things from the middle. If we want to have autonomy, control our resources, then we must practice true federalism. And I keep saying that every state of this federation has a capacity to generate more than what it is earning now from this... Um, from the federal post. Yes. So we need to begin to look at true federalism holistically, not, not only when we want to look at what we, we need in terms of resources or in terms of state police or in terms of political interest. Holistically, if we are doing American kind of um, democracy, then we should go the whole hog. If we are doing a parliamentary system, then we should go... The whole, we, are not, we don't know where we are. We are not, we are not a bad, we are not a bad. That's where we found ourselves. Just a quick question here, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Honorable, please enlighten me. With the question of derivation also coming here, still talking about national state. 
Well, I'm sure you would begin to see agitations for uh, derivation and uh, just like uh, my uh, friend here has mentioned that, uh, you know, there are uh, factors to do with uh, pollution, mm. environmental degradation, and so on and so forth. They will set in, you know, naturally. Of course. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's more or less uh, the same mm. uh, ball game. There's, actual, there's actually a law that the National Water State Government passed which has enabled it to take control of the mineral resources there. I actually need to see that law and um, see how it aligns with the federal law. It may be a miniature it, version of the... It may be a smaller version of the federal law to take oil. So the, it is a small republic of its own now taking the solid... There is no the, way that law will supersede the, the, the existing, you know, constitution. Yeah. Because, because because there's there's any mineral found anywhere mm. on top of the soil, below, uh, the, below the soil... Yeah. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot claim something that is in the that soil, is, deep down, deep in that is or as a state claim that you have your own sky, airspace, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you can't. Okay. The, 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 like we said, this, has, this is the national question. It has also led us to another question. And invariably, invariably this is all talk about the kind of structure that we run as, as government. Federalism. I have seen, try to copy, uh, compare the kind of federalism that we run with so many others, and I see that we stand alone. Perhaps there is no other federal system that is like ours too. Federalism is what they have in the United States of America, as if you compare it with it, completely different. The federal structure they run in Germany is completely at variance with what we run here. The, 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 the federal structure they run in France is not the same as the one we run here. Can we just try to do a quick historical analysis of how we find ourselves with this com complete, di completely different version of federalism that we have, a kind of hybrid? Well, I, it's, uh, it's nice. My friend has just mentioned, we are not birds, we are not bats. No, we, we are not birds, we are not uh, animals, so we are bats. Well, well, whatever it is. We have teeth. But we also fly. You see, uh, but when you have a bat, you know it's a bat. <laughs> we, 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 we came out from the uh, British, we got our independence from the British the government, the British government, and they are running a parliamentary system. We started the parliamentary system before the 1966 coup. And since then, we've been juggling between military, military government and, and the, the First Republic and so on. And eventually, we decided to abandon... Uh, the, uh, the parliamentary system to a presidential system. Now, we carry some of the, 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 the parliamentary system to go and match it with the presidential system that we didn't take it holistically. So you're actually not running any system. Because if you look at the American presidential system that we now think that we are emulating, you'll find out that we've left a lot of things. There are some of these things don't need to be contested. They are clear. Because if you look at America, for instance, the state of California, it's a very rich state. It's richer than some of big countries in Europe. Silicon Valley. Simply because of? Silicon Valley. Because of their, 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 their way they, the federal, the way they run their, their, their state. Because they, their resources, they do a lot of things on their own. And if you look at it, recently I was there, and uh, a friend of mine said, for, for, the, for road constructions, the people send a bill to of uh, uh, twenty billion dollars. The man said, "No, you need twenty-four. He approved twenty-four billion for them because they have a scheduled job to do. They have a time frame. They have everything. So they are not running out of resources." Now we talk of they have their own police. There's no doubt about it. I don't need to talk about it. There's the state police. There's the federal uh, police. So what we we'll do is that we must really know where we are. We are at crossroads. We must decide clearly. And if we want to apply the presidential system along with our own culture and tradition and not mixing it up with uh, the parliamentary system, then we should do so. Because right. our biggest problem is what system of government are we running holistically? Right. Honorable Tuga, are we a product of our peculiar history? Of course we are. We are. And uh, uh, it differs... But I don't want to use the word, are we a victim of mm. our history? It differs uh, immensely from 
uh, the way the United States of America evolved. The United States of America evolved uh, as a result of migration from Europe initially um, around the uh, around New England area, Chesapeake Bay area. You know, they formed colonies. Uh, eventually, those colonies rose up against the British. Uh, then you had the Louisiana Purchase where they uh, doubled the land of the U.S. and then gradually there was a war with, uh, with the Spaniards. They acquired more land, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. So gradually uh, those uh, federating units were becoming part of the United States of America. So you can see that already there was some degree of autonomy. In fact, Texas, the Lone Star State at some point, was even uh, considered a country on its own. And then it Which opted, is with. yes, <laughs> uh, the last being Alaska that was purchased from, uh, from the Soviet Union and so on and so forth, from Russia. So you can see that they were already functioning. But whereas in our case, we started, uh, there are those who argue that, you know, you had the amalgamation of, uh, of, uh, of Nigeria in 1914 and so on and so forth. You know, you can argue back and forth whether, you know, the units that uh, amalgamated were actually functioning as independent states or countries you know that is you know is something that that is to be debated but then because of a consequence of uh the january 66 and july 66 coup counter coup and uh you know the uh, the outcome of that uh we opted for uh the 12 states that did not exist before they were created you know because you know, you could see the dangers of a unitary uh, government and all of that, and it was resisted. Uh, we went, we had a civil war because of that. Uh, there was a long period of uh, military rule under Gawan. Uh, you know, his colleagues in the military pushed him out at the time. Then we decided to create 19 states. So, you know, gradually, you know, this agitation that was there in the Willings Commission report for ethnic identity. Uh, was uh, gaining uh, ground. And that is why you began to have uh, more states being created. Now, the issue here is, are these uh, states actually viable? A lot of them are not viable. They could be viable, but they're not because, you know, you have a situation where, you know, a lot of the uh, administrators of those states just simply sit uh, on their hands, uh, and when the time comes, they come to the center get what they have to get, you know, and they continue high rolling and they're spending. They are not thinking creatively to generate more from those states. So the states are not uh, really, you know, uh, viable. A lot of them are not viable at the moment. Yeah. And those that are, are, are even those that are, uh, you know, a lot of them are, are spending irresponsibly. You know, you, maybe it's just a handful of states that are actually doing uh, things that... Uh, seem to be investing in the future. So, uh, in a nutshell, I think this is where we are. Uh, Dr. Keo, I, I, I like the, 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 the background that the two uh, senior citizens create. <laughs> senior citizens? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the, the background they have created. It's about, but there's this argument that whereas the, 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 we have been trying to move towards creating states, you know, uh, moving, well, that's, is that centrifugal or centripetal? The, the, the forces, the economic forces rather, have been drawing more and more to the center. And perhaps this is what has even weakened the states. If you look through the constitution, you see a lot of things that the states should be doing, the powers they should have over, that would, should have given them control over resources, are concentrated at the center. Such that you hardly can breathe in the state now unless somebody in Abuja says you can. That's, that's, that's the counter argument. Yeah, that's the irony of our, our, our federal system of government. It is such that in its nomenclature, it is a federal government. In its operationability, we are still not far away from the unitary system that we there were scared of. So power is concentrated in the center. The states are choking up, demanding for power which perhaps they would abuse, and the center is thinking that if we let this power go, the, the center can no longer hold. But truly and truly so, 
if we are a federating system or a federal system of government, then we should allow the rule of law to dictate what the federal system is, and then we all abide. There must be rules of the game. America is working because the rule is the rule. Here, what we have seen is the rules are always cited to suit a particular purpose. Even when the house make law, for instance, is to service a particular need, and usually it's geared towards the center where the bourgeois are. Because the center is concentrated with those who have political power, those who have economic power, and those who dictate the pace, either within government or out of government. Because government anywhere has those who are there on the desk and those who are at the background pushing the impact of right. what government does. Right. So what we have here is, I, 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 I feel to differ. I believe that if we even create 60 states, they will all be viable. Have you look at the solid mirror map of Nigeria? It's so awesome that this is the only country in the world that back to back everywhere, we have resources. Even those who have nothing but sand, glass will be produced from those sand. Even you know, wind. Wind will generate yeah. electricity. So, and then you have massive agricultural lands everywhere in this country, especially up north. But like you said, the overdependence on oil resources has made everybody lazy, including the country. That's why the country cannot have a functional refinery. So you produce all this oil and you just quickly sell and make money, buying and selling, and spend money. So we are not investing in the future. And it's weakening this federal system that we want to imbibe, which also puts a big question to the state police issue. Hmm. We're getting to the police now. It's a fallout of the argument. Yes, I want when, to. When just, we're conversing, yeah. So I want to add to the point. You see, the issue of viability, I want to ask you. Isn't relative? Let us cast our minds back before the, in those days we used to have the NS, the native authorities. There were no states, it was the northern region, the western region, and so on but we have the native authorities. They were not getting any allocation from the Federation for any one cobo. They were raising taxes, they were raising their revenue, and they were even giving people scholarship abroad. And there were times that, in fact, there were times that some of the NS were even giving loans to the, to the regional government. Mm. Today, because every month, everybody comes to collect money from Abuja, the, nobody bothers to collect tax. Nobody, that is, nobody bothers to collect tax. And so there's no question of revenue generation. If you look at the, the statistics, if they don't do them just fictitiously, but if they are real statistics, the states are not collecting revenue enough. Hmm. And if you look at it, if you have, if, 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 if the state governments are collecting tax, the NS, the local government are collecting tax, this corruption will even stop. In those days, People said, you can't take my tax. You can't be corrupt with my tax. So even the district heads, the chiefs who collect these tax, if they spend one pound, they'll be sent to jail. They'll be dethroned and sent to jail. Mm. To, uh, uh, today, uh, nobody bothers because the money doesn't, it doesn't know where the money comes from. I, I need to be sure that we are all adding them here that the kind of structure we run is kind of not, not perfect. And we need some, some reform. Exactly. The agitation for, for true federalism is, 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 is right and timely and timely. Are we, are we adding them on that? Well, uh, there are certain things that, you know, I also beg to differ from my, my brother. Um, when you say that uh, the House of Representatives is there, let's say the National Assembly, National Assembly. is there to um, simply serve, you know, their own interests. I don't think that is. Uh, well, that's not what you said. That, that they make laws, but they the laws, laws end yeah, up yeah, serving the elite federal interests. The, the yeah, federal, federal yeah. interests, but that, that is not necessarily the case, you know. Because when you look at the configuration of Nigeria as it is today, the governors have immense powers, more than any other time. They have immense powers. So when you're talking about federalism and you know the fact that the states are so weak and everything is concentrated in the center, we should thank God that. The uh, 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 federal legislature actually ex uh, exists. Mm -hmm. Think of the excesses that would be battling more than we are now if governors had more powers. And then, which brings us to the issue of uh, uh, state police and uh, and so on. Now, uh, you know, he mentioned the issue of uh, the native authorities. One of the, uh, the 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 reasons, the Achilles' heel of the first republic was the native authorities and the Ndoka, which was the local police that were answerable to those native authorities at the time. Because opposition was crushed and it was crushed ruthlessly 
you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I come from, a, I would say I come from a heritage, a background of the Northern People's Congress. But the truth is the truth. The opposition was crushed ruthlessly back then. And it also impacted on the, uh, on the crisis in, in, in the Western region back then because uh, local uh, police uh, were collaborating with the NNDC, uh, NNDC the, the NNDP rather, the political party then of Samuel Laduke, Laduke Akintola and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Meredith Adisa Akinloe, you know, which led to that crisis. We would have uh, uh, NNDP uh, uh, polling agents dressed as the local police because they could they had access to the uniforms because they, they, they you know they, they, they were under them. And, you know, this led to the, 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 the collapse of, uh, of the First Republic. So let us not look at, uh, uh, at, uh, at, uh, uh, at uh, you know, the First Republic. Yeah, and but, the but, but, but the world as a whole. Sentiment, sentimentality. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but the world as a whole has come of age. And I'm wondering whether some of those primitive, primitive condoms of that time... Nigeria has not come of age. Nigeria has not come of age. Really, really. We we've had a dress rehearsal. Primitive. We've had a dress rehearsal of what uh, sort of uh, uh, states we're going to have if governors who have managed to completely uh, sideline the, 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 the state legislatures, if they had the, the power to set up those sort of uh, 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 police forces. We've seen. We, we forget so quickly. Okay. We ha ought to remember uh, Bakasi boys. And what happened in Anambra State when uh, the, 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 the state uh, House of Assembly was compelled by the, the then governor in, I think, was it, was it 2000 and 2001, to set up the Anambra Vigilante Service with an office in the, in the, in, 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 in the governor's uh, uh, office there, in the government house. We have forgotten uh, Barnabas Igwe, the president of, uh, of, of, of the Nigerian Bar Association who was killed with his wife. The car ran, their own car was used to kill them and ran over them time and again. Amnesty International, if you remember back then in 2002, said there were over 1,000 extrajudicial killings in Anambra State. We have, you know, other examples elsewhere where, you know, governors, where political foes of governors, you know, seem to just disappear. Even recently in Katsana, was it 2009 when you had the issue of, uh, of uh, Tasi Elder, you know, which led to a crisis in, uh, in Kasada. We've seen the dress rehearsal in uh, some of the states that have adopted Sharia with, uh, with, with, the, with the issue of Hizba, you know, and the excesses. And then when it comes to elections, you know, what brought about the crisis that we have in the Northeast today? What brought about the uh, escalation of militancy in the Niger Delta? It was elections, it was uh, the employment of uh, certain militias you know, who would end up being those state police, you know, by, by governors back then. You know, if you look at, there's a correlation between uh, elections, the crisis uh, during elections, election malpractices, and, 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 and where we are today. Darren, the argument for or against police has started. Horrible has opened the, 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 the flag. Well, he has gone very Where do you stand on this issue? He, he has gone very deep. I stand on the fact that we need state police. You are for? He is against? I'm for it. Okay. Now, my I'm against it for now. I uh, want it to be gradual. There are certain things that have to be in place. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Maybe when I come back. Fortunately and unfortunately, so you'll be on one side and we'll be on one side. Eh? <laughs> you, you are for? No, I'm against it strongly for, against, for so many reasons. You're against the ones, Yes, against okay. the police. You, you will advance the police. Okay. Let, let me hear it. Uh, it's interesting to look at this issue of state police and uh, the ant antecedents of what he has just enumerated. But if you look at the system of government first, the presidential system, the presidential system of government states uh, uh, goes for state police. That is what is happening in the U.S. That's the first thing. Now, when you look at this state police, why I'm for state police? Because the situation that has happened in this country today, if you look at the past regime work from let the and this up to this time, if you tabulate the number of people that have been killed. Hardly will anybody say he has not been involved one way or the other. A relation of his has been killed one way or the other, kidnapping, this crisis, this and that. 
If you look at how much, how many, the number of people that have been killed, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's in hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at also the resources that have been spent on, on the security, it is very big. Now, if you look at it, and the police people now, if you go to the streets of other places, even policemen themselves today, the Nigerian police, they barricade the streets that they live. They don't feel safe themselves. They can't even protect themselves, not to talk of protecting other people. And again, you look at it today. In almost every state, they have what the vigilante. The police have even encouraged vigilante. Vigilante is not coming from anywhere. I cannot come from Plato to go to Bochi to be a vigilante there. It has to be have to be in Plato. He has to, if you are in Casina, you have to provide vigilante in Casina. That means there's an implied acceptance of state police, although they are not legalized. It is also better for them to have a rules and uh, regulations rather than having divisive interests, because already we have state police. Secondly, look at it today. Virtually every state is funding police operation. Like I was hearing over the TV that the president may, may commission 300 vehicles. You find that every state will buy vehicles, will buy communication, Logistics will give them fuel and everything. Now, that is eating into the budget of the state. Now, the, the, the big amount of money that is made available for the police in the, in the, in the, in the budget, mm. which is, should be used for operations. You go to the police station, they said you need to buy paper to write statement. You do all these things, now that tells you something is wrong. Now, if you tell me the policeman that is sent from Rivers to go to Yobe State, the first thing he will be thinking, how can he save his own life from being killed? Two, he does not hear the language. He does not even know the terrain. He doesn't know the culture of the people. He doesn't know when he will offend them. His first thing is to think of how to safeguard his life. He's thinking of his family back home. His concentration is not there. Mm. So probably the so, first thing he will do is to is to uh, uh, probably be part and parcel of whatever he means. Of, of course, he's, he's, he needs money. He needs to survive. He needs his life to be protected. So the level of commitment will be questionable. Hmm. Now you send somebody from Yobe who doesn't know how to swim. Send, send him, him to, to Brass. To Rivers, Brass. The man has never seen the sea. You send him there. And he's on the how boat can he chase? Hours. How can he chase somebody? <laughs> uh, this is... Mm. We, have, we cannot deceive ourselves. And that is why we are coming back to the issue of vigilante. And I want to bet you, if you are a state uh, police, you know your father is in the church, your brother is in the mosque, your children are in the school, you will go all, at all hawk to make sure you give them security. Okay. That is, you have personal commitment. And... If you look at the resources today of the state governments that are involved in vigilante, in providing the Nigerian police resources, then you, 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 you wonder where we are going. All right. I, 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 maybe, I, maybe, I will come back. Yes, maybe I need to stop you for now. Yes. Uh, I, I, I need to get your position clearly, which is that it's not as if you are against state police. For now, I'm against it. I'm saying for that now, for now you're certain it. things have to be in place. You have to reform the police. Okay. You have to... Uh, Probably reform our laws as well. Lo yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comprehensive thing. Yeah, the judicial not, system. Not, as why, a whole. why you were talking about the fact that the governors, as they are already, already have too much powers. Yes. And my mind quickly went back to the United States of America, for example. Will a governor in any state of the United States of America have power to be above the law, the way our governors will say they are above the law here, yeah. will the governor of a state in America subjugate the, the functions or the position of his state assembly under the American Constitution? Probably not. So there, are, so there are checks and balances that are in their system, which makes the governor not to be a superhuman being Absolutely. or an emperor. Absolutely. So perhaps those are things that also will happen here, so that we won't be seeing the governor when we have a state police, the same way we are seeing governors now with enormous power such that in most cases, the houses of assembly are completely under their armpits. But you see, other than the fact that, just like I uh, explained earlier, we evolved uh, differently as countries, you also have a situation where 
uh, the functions of uh, police or law enforcement in general in the United States is different from the functions they are having to bear here. Here you have a situation where police is uh, responsible for maintaining law and order, for, uh, uh, for, 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 for being the, uh, the law enforcers, and then for prosecuting. There they do not prosecute. You have a district attorney's office that is responsible for... So you have that problem. Apart from that, they are well-funded, well-equipped, okay? And you have a national guard, which we don't have. That's why I'm saying we need to do all those things, all those things. gradually hmm. before you start talking about state police. And even so, you know, they had... They had in the United States, you've had showdowns between the federal government and state governments. During the civil rights uh, movement, you had up to today... In the United States, if you go to school in the U.S., they will teach you about Shwena, Goodman, and Shani, two Jews and a black that were killed in Mississippi. It is still there. They keep it alive because it was, you know, in, in, in collusion. They were killed in collusion with a racist state governor who used his state troopers to kill them. And they took him up, you know. So, you know, these are sort of things. But, you know, you can't just jump over it and say, oh, look, you know, in this mess that we're in, we're fighting Boko Haram, we're fighting militancy, we're fighting in irredentist uh, uh, tendencies. And then you just say state police. Mm -hmm. And the, the governors are wayward. They're, you know, most of them are corrupt. You can see all of that. And then you put extra wahala on, on our heads of state police. <laughs> actually, on. actually, just, is, to, just, yes. to, just to ice what you are he's opposed saying. To. Just to ice what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting the way Amana we just thrown out and we just demand for anything because we think it's a democratic system so we can ask for anything and then get it first on the truth of nigerians you don't put something on nothing and expect it to stand it's a very big challenge in as much as in a federal system the ideal situation i do not is to have a state police the reality is that this country is not ripe for it because of our bush brain mentality system and greed ordinary local government system that is constitutionally approved in the federal constitution, three tiers of government, has been subsumed and hijacked completely and talking in the butt of all these governors that are high-handed. Mm -hmm. Possibly like six or seven states have functional local governments, yeah. election done. And then even those six or seven states, maybe only River State and Lagos State, has given free hand to the councils to take their money when it comes to the federation account. What we see is that some states have refused, even, even states run by people who we thought are activists by excellence, have refused to conduct local government elections. They're siphoning these I hope funds. you are not talking about my state. They are, they are siphoning these funds, <laughs> and then they are keeping it, and they are dictating what happens. They appoint caretaker committee, denying the grassroots of the benefits of democracy. That's a reflection of how we think. So now we have a state police funded by a governor. He will sit down there, hire and fire. If I select those he wants to be in the state police and give them in-house directive of who to take off the state, you'll be shocked that some people will pack out of their state and look for a new state to, to, for identity. Mm -hmm. In America... Too many things happen that make the state police function. Everybody in America thinks America, not state. So, for instance, my father is from California, and I was born in New York. I'm in New York. I have no business with the state of California. I, have, I don't have any business with... I'm, by bet, a New York citizen. My allegiance is to New York. I think New York and then America. Hmm. If there's a problem... Which is, why, which is why the Bush siblings can be governors in so many, many states. states. So, but here, even if my father had had me in just plateau as a policeman then, I am core Delta. It's strange that I speak Ijo. Even when I jump into Bayasa State, they will push me back to Delta State. Go to your Delta State, you are Ijo Delta. That's the kind of way we think. So that kind of way, if we create a state police, we create that kind of barriers. So you have people who think of their states at the detriment of the national interest. So you have a national state police confronting the FCT police just here in, uh, in, Karu. in Karu. And then we're dealing with that as another Boko Haram issue. And some of the points that they have conversed for the creation of state police don't make sense to me. I don't, when people talk about Boko Haram and the escalator and look at it as a big issue, I say the country is not yet ready to deal with it. You don't deal with Boko Haram carrying long guns and looking for the people in the streets. It's madness. This is an intelligent war. What is the SSS doing? The police itself has been demoralized that they just wear uniforms. They themselves in the uniform don't believe that they're policemen. So they can't do the job. That's why he's saying that you go to a police station, go here now in Metama, you see the way the police zone, zone headquarters is so barricaded. You civilian cannot even run there for safety. You have been told not to park, get there, so you are out. So when there's a problem, they protect themselves. And for so many reasons, whereas in America, when you wear the national uniform of the police, a federal police or a state police, it's honorable to have it. 
you know that your life is guaranteed and you can die for your citizens because the rest of your family is taken care of and you are a national hero. Those who died in the line of fire service, they cannot, their bodies may not even be identified there because there's no proper forensic. The, the families are abandoned after the news headline of their death. So everybody, like you said, uh, probably all, the, the, what are you employ the local police of, uh, them from your state? What are you employ local police from your state? When, the, when push come to shove, he will run to his village and leave you where you are. Because there's no security. And the way the governors run this thing, what I think they are looking for is to arrogate more powers to intimidate the system. Already with the federal police, with the federal police, I had an election in this country. With the federal police itself, every commissioner has a say with the policemen that are living with him. Those police are not answerable to the IG. They are answerable to the target of their stomach, the man who pays their bill. They have a federal gun in their hand. They will shoot you if the commissioner asks them to shoot you, and they will explain later. That's the kind of commitment we have in terms of patriotism of a police under a federal system where the IG has a say. And then I do not agree that governors cannot control commissioner of police. It's not true. Mm. The governors order the commissioner of police to they come to the them. Come with the commissioner of police. The commissioner of police runs down to the government, government, government house. The tube. And then they tell them this thing is them. happening. So the only thing you know? they want to do is to look for another conduit pipe to justify but how they can There are also governors funds. who will tell you that the commissioners of police don't answer them. Like this uh, light uh, light the case, the governor had to practically put a, a knife to the neck of the commissioner before he could volunteer information for him that I can't tell you anything. If you want anything, go to Abuja. That's, no, 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 that's political. Like, no, that is political. Uh, and maybe the governor is not providing enough funding. No, that's political. That's political. The governors, when they want to show up. And that's the critical issue. Where? That, that the governors, some of the governors are saying that if we fund the police, then we should have more say in how it is controlled. That which is that the argument has turned to it is not who controls the police now, but who the police works for. That's the point. Should the police work for the government or for or the, the people? people? That's the question. That's the, I, I need to answer. But, 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 but before you answer, and I, even then our time is running uh, fast. Let me quickly see if you can take some of the tweets we are getting here. Zangaland says uh, uh, Nigeria surprised North, Northern governors. Of, uh, Okay, sorry. I'm surprised that northern governors oppose state police. The Hizba call in many northern states is a variant of state police. Why not the conventional police? On Lale Abiodun, immunity clause for executives is not there in the United States. The cop, the, the, they could be taken to court anytime, yeah. unlike in Nigeria, and we want state police. Mm. It's asking a very big question there. Akinjobi Olua Femi says, State police is the answer to insecurity in Nigeria, but the executive and national assembly can make laws to curb any excesses. Uh, Juwan says having a state police, now. yeah. Juwan says having a state police is a step in the right direction. Uh, state police, let states or, net, or regions who want it have it, and let those who want the status quo to remain uh, do so. All right. You have had so many of the arguments that has been covered, and I ask the question. Is it, should, it, should the question not be who should the police work for? The government, those in government, or we, the people? The police should work for the people, not the government. The police should protect the people. Because if you look at it, we have been mentioning the United States. The policeman in the United States, even the president, cannot park in the wrong place. Exactly. The president of America cannot go if the speed limit is 70 mm. kilos per hour. The American president went to, to UK. Yes. He was given a bill for Parking the number of cars that were parked on the streets exactly. while he was on the state visit exactly. to, to the Queen. So, I think. so I'm sure the, the public, both the, pres, the president and the individual have equal rights if we are to follow the rule. I, so, I support what my colleagues are saying in the sense that we are not enforcing our laws in this country. There's no risk. Laws have respect to persons. But whereas in other countries, law has no respect to anybody. Everybody is subjected to the law. Mm -hmm. Now, we should not just abandon the issue of state police, or we should not see, like my friend said, we are not right for it. It means we will continue to be thinking within the box. Mm -hmm. okay. I believe that something must start. The laws must, everybody must respect the law. If we want to continue as a country, okay, we need to think out There's of the no box. When, when are we going to be right for it? We should be thinking out of the box. When we uh, provide more training for our police, so that the policeman from Bauchi, when he's posted to Bayelsa, will be able to swim. 
because you drive from police college <laughs> to <laughs> swim pool. Yeah, if you go through the system, you should be able to, to swim. Mm. And then when we devolve some of these uh, 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 powers and, uh, and agencies that already uh, exist under the police, create a national guard, uh, uh, um, uh, and then, you know, maybe using uh, uh, civil defense, using marine police to create such a national guard, and so on and so forth. Mm. Proper training, proper equipment, proper funding. Proper reorientation. Proper as to who your loyalty is to. Training. Exactly. exactly. Mm. You know? Dr. Kio, your final comments, too? I have always said that if we're going to talk about state police, we must devolve what we're doing and practice through federalism. Let the, the states have 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 control of their resources, generate their income, pay tax to the center, fund their police, fund their hospitals, fund their schools, like it's done anywhere else. If we cannot do that, we must strengthen the police institution such that a policeman anywhere is a policeman everywhere. With the requisite training and confidence and mental moral balance to do a policeman's job for every Nigerian. Until we are ready to do either of this, this police that we have cannot solve the problem. Thank you so very much, sir. I really appreciate your time this morning. We've been joining this very important discussion, which we just opened this morning, uh, by some eminent citizens, Da Bulus Pam, Da Reng. Uh, he's a retired general manager of the First Bank, uh, retired banker, really, uh, also a practicing politician, I would say. Thank you so very much, sir. We appreciate your time. And, of course, another practicing politician, uh, Honorable Yusuf Tuga. He's on temporary holiday. I, I assume, uh, Honorable Tuga is a former member of the House of Reps. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. And of course, uh, Dr. Chris Akio is a former president of the Joy Youth Council. Thank you so very much, Chris. Thank you I very appreciate much. your time. All right. It's the final edition for the week. Thank God it's Friday. For those of you who have the luxury of a weekend break, well, do enjoy the break. Do, things, do everything in moderation. Stay within the ambits of the law. Uh, stay out of trouble so that I can see you on Monday.